Hello friends, polymyxin B is an old antibiotic which was developed in 1940s. In recent years, it is being used as a last resort therapy for gram-negative MDR infections and also XDR infections. So in this short lecture, I'm going to cover its brief pharmacology indications and evidence base regarding the clinical efficacy in MDR infections. Chemically, it consists of a positively charged peptide ring and a tripeptide side chain with a fatty acid tail. Tail helps in attachment and entry through bacterial membrane. How does it act? Let's understand. Polymyxin B binds to the negatively charged lipopolysaccharide on the outer cell membrane of gram-negative bacteria. Interactions of cationic polymyxin B and anionic uh, lipopolysaccharide displace the positively charged cations like calcium and magnesium, which are stabilizer of lipopolysaccharide cell membrane, lead to instability of cell membrane. Once inside the bacterial cell, polymyxin B stops the cellular respiration, that is uh, bacterial respiration. And secondly, the polymyxins are reported to have potent anti-endotoxin activity. So this is about the mechanism of action. Now regarding the range of bacteria it can kill, it acts against most of the gram-negative aerobic bacilli, including Acinetobacter, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, and Androbacter species, which are all important nosocomial pathogens. However, several pathogens poses intrinsic resistance to the polymyxins, which we must not forget, such as Proteus, Providentia, Seratia, Neisseria, Chromobacterium, and Burgholderia. And all gram-positive and anaerobic in, uh, organisms also are resistant to polymyxin B. Despite wide clinical use, the understanding of pharmacokinetics of polymyxin B has not been very great. Polymyxin B is administered intravenously as sulfate salt, which is an active compound and has high protein binding and large volume of distribution of about 42 liters. After IV injection, it spreads very fast and well to all tissues, especially GI, respiratory, biliary, and soft tissues. However, the penetration of polymyxin B into CSF is not well described. Despite large volume of distribution, the elimination is rather fast with half-life of about 9 to 12 hours and eliminated predominantly via non renal mechanism. So typically less than 5% of an intravenous dose of polymyxin B is excreted in urine unchanged. Therefore, renal based dose reduction is not relevant for polymyxin B. If a decrease in creatinine clearance occurs during the therapy, the polymyxin B daily dose should not be decreased, particularly in a patient with a life-threatening or deep-seated infection or if the pathogen's MIC is more than one milligram per liter on sensitivity pattern. Being a large non dilatable molecule, polymyxin B does not require dose modification in patients on renal replacement therapy. If you compare with cholestin, polymyxin B is renally safe whereas cholestin is administered as product and most of it gets cleared via kidney. So cholestin requires a significant dose adjustment in renal impairment. The dose is 15,000 to 25,000 units per kg divided into two doses. Even in renal dysfunction, do not decrease the dose lower than 15,000 units per kg for better bactericidal effects. So for an adult patient, use 15 lakhs per day in two divided doses of 7.5 lakh unit IV. The dose more than 20 lakhs per unit per day may cause real impairment. That, that one you should remember. CSF penetration may not be great. So for the intrathecal dose, you have to use 50,000 OD for three days, then 50,000 uh, alternate day for at least two weeks after the cultures of CSF are negative and sugar content has returned to normal. Can we use an relational route in MDR WAF cases? 
yes but there is limited literature for the utility of aerosolized polymyxin b but clinical studies are there and the dose described was 2.5 mg per kg that is 25000 unit per kg per day i may still wait for few more studies to come before i would use in my patients however guidelines give only weak recommendations for aerosolization of polymyxin b the main side effect of polymyxins are nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity in case of polymyxin b the neurotoxicity is the most common most uh, significant uh, side effect so patients who are at particular risk are myasthenia gravis patient who require increased doses of neostigmine other adverse effects include paresthesia dizziness taxia and dysarthria in less than 10% cases hypersensitivity may also occur coming to the indications of polymyxin b as we all know it is a antibiotic choice as a last resort to combat mdr gram negative infections in icu this should be guided by cultures and sensitivity testing and mic values so now let's talk about the evidence base for clinical efficacy of polymyxin b so acinetobacter bomini is a major killer in icu patients especially due to its multi drug resistance property and capacity to form a biofilm findings from a mexican study demonstrate 100% susceptibility of highly lethal mdr a bomini to polymyxin b which suggests superior efficacy of polymyxin b against mdr and biofilm producing a bomini isolates lim et al evaluated three antibiotics polymyxin b rifampicin and tegacycline alone and in combination in such infections in 31 mdr isolates all were susceptible to polymyxin b but if they used the monotherapy no antibiotic had bactericidal activity but in combination polymyxin b and rifampicin had highest bactericidal activity that was about 42% in another study barth et al evaluated activity of polymyxin b in combination with imipenem meropenem or tegacycline and they found that polymyxin b plus cabapenem combination was most effective against k pneumonia and enterobacter pylori compared to tegacycline combination in a retrospective study in 276 patient elios et al explored the impact of dose of polymyxin b on mortality outcome so they found that the mortality rate was 60.5% septic shock use of mechanical ventilation charlson's comorbidity score and age was independent predictors of mortality polymyxin b in a dose of 200 mg per day and above was associated with significant lower mortality but 200 200 mg means 20 lakhs unit this dose had higher risk of severe renal impairment so you have to look for other risk factors in such patients who may develop renal dysfunction apart from using the polymyxin b in larger doses more than 200 mg per day so another study is there which was performed in multiple drug resistant gram negative respiratory tract infection patient it was a retrospective analysis of 25 critically ill patient they all received 29 days of course the 20 total courses were received main pathogens were isolated were uh, acinetobacter bomini and uh, pseudomonas aeruginosa the clinical cure rate was very high 76% and they concluded that polymyxin b in combination with other antimicrobials can be considered as a reasonable and safe treatment options for mdr gram negative respiratory tract infection though this was an old study but that was the study which always have been quoted to use the polymyxin b for such infections in such particular group of patients so that's all in summary i can say that pharmacokinetics of polymyxin b is still requires research its role in resistant and severe infection as combination therapy has been proven and it still require more data dose may be reduced in aki or ckd depending upon uh, not lower than 15 lakh unit per day in favor of better microbiological clearance combination should be preferred over monotherapy in mdr infections as we can also see in sepsis 2021 guideline which i just uh, uploaded a video on uh, sepsis 2021 guideline some time back 
and every opportunity to save this drug as last resort rather than the overuse because we have very few antibiotics left in pipeline and the research pipeline is quite an empty. Thank you so much for your attention.